prepare yourself for some of the coolest features of TypeScript. These four advanced features will help you generate types out of nowhere. This episode of Too Long To Read TypeScript is a countdown. We will discover the keywords type of, key of, and infer. We will also learn how to create lookup types and what reasons we have to do that. If you use these features, TypeScript will automatically generate types for you, so you don't have to. It's pure magic. Hello friends, it's Nikos here and um, welcome back to the channel. If you are new to this series, uh, this is a series about TypeScript. Uh, every week we are exploring a feature of the language with practical examples and with real life scenarios. So uh, if all these concepts sound Greek to you, then you can watch this series from the very beginning because my goal is to help you ace this TypeScript interview. So today we will be reviewing some of the most advanced tooling TypeScript provides to customize type annotations. Some of these features may uh, seem advanced for you, uh, some may not. <laughs> it, strongly, it strongly depends on the uh, experience and the time you have spent playing with the language itself. It also depends on how many episodes of this series you have watched. No hard feelings, really. I guess we need a proper countdown for this. Are you ready? Okay, let's kick it off. You probably know the type of keyword, right? We've seen this in multiple episodes. Just remember, this will return the type of uh, the value you are passing. So for example, if I pass type of uh, hello, it will return a string. But if I pass, for example, type of one, two, three, it will return a number. So TypeScript has enhanced the type of keyword. Uh, it's like type of on steroids. It doesn't only understand JavaScript types, but uh, also it supports TypeScript types as well. So here, for example, if you have a type track and you use it to uh, create a track uh, variable, then you can use the type of track and you will get back the track type. Uh, of course, this will work in uh, compilation type only. You will see it in the editor. You will not see this in your actual application because um, at runtime, uh, all these types are gone because uh, we don't have TypeScript there, right? But did you know that we can use the type of keyword to dynamically generate types from inferred ones? Let me show you what I mean. So here is an object that contains information about an artist. Uh, we have an ID, a name, uh, followed, we have the times, we listen to their songs, and we have the type, which is a band. I know what you're thinking. We never created a type for an artist before in this series. And uh, there's a good reason. We don't need to create manually this type and specify all these properties and their types manually. What we are going to do here is to infer them from an existing object. So uh, we have this object artist and what I'm going to do is create a type artist. And here's the magic. We can say type of artist. Mind that this is with a small a because it's the actual object we have as a reference. And this is with a capital A because it's our type. And now if I hover over the type artist, you will see that we get the type definition for free because we use the type of keyword and uh, the appropriate object structure that we are expecting from an artist to have. And uh, boom, that's all we need to do. And now we can use this type anywhere in our code. So for example, if we have a function, get me those artists, which somehow returns the artist from uh, a database. What we can say as a return value is that uh, this will return an array of artists. And there you have it. Be careful with this keyword, try not to use it. It's better to define manually the types. I know sometimes it's better, especially when the types are uh, not the types that your application creates, uh, but the types that another development team, for example, is generating for you or uh, sometimes you have dynamically generated types and you want just to use those objects 
somewhere else. So yeah, that's a very nice way to create automatically types and uh, use them in your code. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Now, similar to the type of keyword, we also have the key of keyword. And this is a TypeScript exclusive keyword, so you will not find this in JavaScript. It's pretty similar with uh, the type of keyword, but instead of returning you the actual type uh, from the inferred one, it uh, returns the keys of this object structure. So uh, let's create a type artist keys, and we will use the key of keyword for the artist type to get the keys of the artist type. And now if we hover over here, you will see that we have a union with all the keys, all the property names that we have and method names, so the members of this uh, object and uh, in a string format. So we can now use this in our generic or utility types. Of course, this will work with other kinds of types. For example, if you want to take the keys of the string, you can say key of string, and this will return you all the methods a string can have. So we have, for example, two string, we have uh, search, replace, and all the available methods. And now something trickier. What if I want the keys of the undefined type? So let's try this here to see what it will return. Can you guess what will be the answer? Well, let's see. If I hover over here, we will get never because, yeah, undefined actually doesn't have any properties, right? And this, my friends, is how you can use the key of keyword to uh, get the uh, keys of a specific object structure. And um, I know that you will probably not use this on a daily basis, but trust me, it can be extremely powerful when you write your own generic types or when you create your own utility types. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So TypeScript has also a thing called lookup types. Here, for example, we have a very nice union with all the keys within our artist object structure. But what if we want to get the type of the properties? For example, what if we want to get the type of the property ID, which we know it's a string. So to do that, let's create type artist key. So here I'm going to use the artist type and um, we are going to get one of its properties using the uh, array bracket. So here, for example, we can say ID. And uh, if I hover over the artist key, we will see, yeah, it's actually a string, which is, as expected, the correct type. So pretty cool, this is called lookup types and you can use them uh, in combination with these two to retrieve the types of your keys. And now is the time to go to the last one. Okay, this is broken. Maybe it's because it's a chopstick. Okay, let's go to the last one. Now, the last keyword I want to show you today is called infer. And um, to understand how it works, we need to remember a little bit the, how the conditional types work. We've seen the conditional types before. It's basically um, an if statement that we can use within our types. Uh, here's an example. We have the type non-nullable, which is a very nice utility type. Uh, the reason that TypeScript complains here is that it's a built-in type and I'm trying to uh, redefine it, but we don't care for a moment. Let's see how it works. Uh, it uh, accepts a type T and then we check if the T extends null or undefined. So we are checking if this type is null or undefined. And if this is true, then we'll return never, which means we want to filter out those two values. Otherwise, of course, we'll return the type itself. And to demonstrate how this works, if I have, for example, a nullable string, which accepts a string or null as acceptable values, then I can have a safe string by removing these values if I use the non-nullable utility. So once again, this nullable string has a string and null as acceptable values, but because we are using non-nullable here, 
we are filtering out the null and uh, yeah, we get back a string. So now let's take this concept a little bit further. Let's say that we want uh, a new utility type flatten, which will accept an array, let's say an array of something, let's say it's a string, and then uh, this will return basically the type of the array, string. And uh, this you can use in multiple cases. For example, you can have a promise, right? Uh, and this uh, is a promise of strings and then you get back a string. Okay, so how we build this utility type? Uh, well, first of all, we need to accept the type T and check if the type T extends an array. And now here we can use the infer keyword to uh, create, to infer the type of this array and create something like a variable, a temporary uh, type R. And this we can use as a return type. So here, if our uh, type extends, oh, here I forgot the type keyword. Okay. So here, uh, if our type T extends uh, the array, uh, we are returning the type of the array, which is the R type. Otherwise, we return the T, which is not an array. Okay, so let's test if this will work. Uh, let's say, for example, that I have a type array and I'm using the flatten utility type to pass, let's say, an array of string. So let's battle test this a bit. If this was just a string, we will still get back a string and no error will be thrown. And of course, if this is, for example, a promise, we will get back a string. Once again, this utility type will accept uh, the array of strings and then it will check if it's uh, an array, then it will infer the type of the array. So then it will return it as the truthy value. Otherwise, it will return the type T, which is the original value, which is not a string. And this, my friends, is the infer keyword. It's very useful when you have promises and you want to get uh, the return type of the promise itself. As you can see, the world of TypeScript hides a lot of gems. And I know that it takes uh, quite a lot of time and effort and energy to learn all these features, but uh, don't be scared because uh, you are not going to use these features on a daily basis. In fact, uh, remember that it's better to create the types by yourself than to actually infer or create them, generate them uh, dynamically, right? Um, use these features only when you want to, uh, on spot, you want to create uh, something uh, for a specific use case, but don't use them to define your root types for your application. If you are developing a shared library and you want to write type definitions, then these features will be really useful for you because uh, it will help you to create uh, a more robust API. If you are an application developer, then uh, most probably you will uh, rarely use these features, but uh, you should keep them as a reference because you never know when they are going to be useful for you. Speaking of references, in my blog post, you can find everything I presented to you in this video, including the coding examples. And it's a nice way to review what we've learned. And somewhere here, our magical tricks have come to an end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, feel free to suggest uh, any topics for my next videos. So thank you very much for watching. Have a creative day and I will see you in the next one.